This AGY is super mid and competitive. Its stats are all over the place, but it's got 107 attack to work with and a little bit of special bulk. It does have a signature ability in long reach, which makes it so that it doesn't make contact with the target, which is useful versus things like Rocky Helmet or status abilities. So we can use Sword Stance to double our attack, and its Grass Ghost typing does give it some solid dual stab options with Spirit Shackle, which prevents the opponent from switching out, and Leaf Blade for some good old slicing. It can bypass being slow with stab priority shadow sneaks with an extra 20% boost from a spell tag held item. And while the Sidui is often overlooked, it can still be a beast. Look, you know what would have been great? If every single thing from Alola wasn't just slow as hell. But instead, here we are with our owl that goes two miles an hour and we're still gonna go ahead and try to get this bad boy to put in some work. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400K and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the spicy chicken. They've got the Blaziken, as I'm gonna lead off with the Empoleon. We're kind of an interesting matchup here as we're super effective against each other. Most of the time, Blaziken is gonna be swords dancing and going for protects for speed boost. And I really would like this thing to not get out of hand. However, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the Stealth Rock turn one here, kind of scout what they want to go for. And as they hit me with an Aura Sphere, it turns out they're working with special attacking Blaziken, which is actually kind of better than you'd think because most people are just hard coded to expect Blaziken to be physical. It does work out better for me in this situation, just because of course my Empoleon is specially defensive. So I can take an Aura Sphere even through the super effective hit. And you always forget that Blaziken has base 110 special attack. It's only 10 lower than its physical attack. So interesting special Blaziken here. I'm considering on if I should try to conserve this. I don't have the greatest switch-ins to this, unfortunately. So as I decide to kind of just sack off the Empoleon, they actually go for the Flamethrower, which I can just barely hang on to. I, I do get burnt, which sucks, but it allows me then to fire off a Surf, which I wasn't expecting to even get off, and then it just straight up kills the Blaziken, which is sick. They probably expected me to switch into the Ghost type in Decidueye to, you know, take the Aura Sphere, but sometimes it just works out just staying in and just clicking stuff. So as I do get burnt, I luckily, after the leftover recovery, I don't die. I get knocked down to four. And now that's great because I get to see what they want to bring in versus the Empoleon. And then kind of, well, I am going to go down. I can figure out a matchup. So they are going to bring in the Sinistra. This thing is floating way high up in the air. Just asking to be hit with a freaking bat like a pinata. So they are going to outspeed. They go for the Macha Gacha. Does a little spin -a and just throws up all over the place. That is going to kill the Empoleon. So... With that, I can now decide a matchup on whatever I want to bring into the fella, and Empoleon kind of definitely did his job at least taking care of Blaziken. So, I decide I'm going to go into Magmortar. I know that this thing can't hit me with a Shadow Ball, but I can take that, and then plus I can go ahead and burn him. The second I switch this thing in, I'm like, yeah, you know what? This thing has Heat Proof, and that probably wasn't the best idea. It is still super effective, but with that ability, it's going to basically nullify that, and I'm still going to Flamethrower anyway. I'm feeling like I can still get a nice little two-hit KO, or at least at this point, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. So they're actually going to end up busting out the Terra. They're going to pull out the Terra normal. So Buddy's got a diamond on his head. He do be looking kind of fresh, though. And that is now going to make it not even a super effective flamethrower through heat proof. And flame Magmortar is looking, looking real nice. Now look at that damage. That He's never going to recover from that. Also, to make matters worse, they do have Scald. I forget that this thing gets Scald. And it's been a minute since I've used a freaking... Moral of the story, I'm blowing it against the freaking Macha Gacha guy. And... <laughs> At this point, I'm like, you know, I might as well actually conserve Magmortar. First of all, I know I'm not going to be able to do anything to this. And then also, I can kind of tuck away a hidden Solar Beam for later, potentially versus the Swampert that they have in the back. So I decided to switch into the Dadun Sparse. We are looking Bulbous and Burnt. I, I do come in on a Skull and, of course, get Burnt. However, this thing doesn't really matter. I kind of use this Dunsparce on this team as basically just a nice little punching bag switch in. I can take hits from stuff and then I can like go for a boom burst, at least do a, a decent chunk with it. They are going to Macha Gacha, which uh, does do a decent bit and also heals it. And the one good thing is at least they've committed the Terra at this point. This thing being normal type is fine. I can boom burst. Thought it was going to be maybe over 50. It does, in fact, take it because this little green bastard it never wants to die. I, I don't know. I do get the throat spray to activate from that boom burst. However, the problem is, especially with that burn, it's looking like I'm gonna be in range to die from the next Macha Gacha. And I'm like, bro, I'm being sinistered like never before out here. So <laughs> they are gonna throw some more Macha at me. Down goes the, the Dun Sparse, which again is fine. This thing doesn't have a huge role, especially in this matchup. Uh, so at least I was able to come in, get a little bit of chip, and now we can get something going. Now, here's where at least the Terra Normal does help me out a little bit, and that's because I do have the option for Galarian Zapdos. 
But then also as I'm looking at it, I can actually go Decidueye here. And if I can start to set up with the Decidueye, I actually feel like I have a really good matchup versus a lot of what they have in the back. So Decidueye's got some tricks under its sleeve. I decide I'm going to go for the Swords Dance. Now this is because I know I can take at least one Shadow Ball from this thing. And uh, I do actually also outspeed. So we get that nice little double attack. They are going to go for that Shadow Ball. However, we do have a lot of special bulk. And it does allow us to barely hang on. We do live with 21, which is great. And at this point now, I can just go ahead and slice his ass up. And we're finally taking care <laughs> of freaking Sinistra. So that thing is out of the way. Also, it is going to get rid of the Terra. So there's going to be no shenanigans in the back later. And Decidueye is looking pretty decent here just because I have a couple tricks. So... With the Revenge Switch, they're actually going to end up switching into the Hisuian Braviary, which is great. Because this Psychic-type fella, while he is, is looking badass and shiny, he is going to take some Stealth Rock Chip. And at plus two, I actually have myself a nice little little sneaky sneaky Shadow Sneak here. I can go for that priority. And with the boost, that's going to be able to take care of it. So down goes the Braviary, which is great. And sometimes you don't even need to be fast when you got max HP and a little priority action. So... Uh, Shadow Sneak comes in clutch. At this point, now they're going to bring in the Klefki. So, Klefki, of course, in general, is just going to be a little annoying fella that comes in and likely just sets up screens and potentially goes for foul play. So, they do go for the Reflect turn one here. I am going to be able to now hit it with a Spirit Shackle. And even after the Sword Stance through the Reflect, it's going to do a, a solid bit of damage. It also is going to lock this thing in uh, to make it so they cannot switch out. So, one good thing about Klefki is at least a lot of the time, they don't have attacking options, and it turns out as they go for the Thunder Wave, it seems likely that this fella is not going to be working with any offensive options. It's probably dual screens and like freaking some some type of setup to Thunder Wave. So I can then finish it off with a, a second Spirit Shackle, which is great. So Decidueye just out here making a poking some holes in the squad, and sadly as now they get to go into the Swampert, I am paralyzed, so I'm slower. Which, I was really looking forward to freaking leaf blading this fool into the fucking Shadow Realm. However, knowing that this thing's gonna be faster through the para, I, I try to go for the Shadow Sneak just to get a little bit of chip. And I do get paralyzed. So, they can finish me off with an Ice Punch, which is unfortunate. But, our fellow Robin Hood took care of half the team. And is gonna make it a whole lot easier for the threats we have in the back. So, I can now switch into whatever I like against a Swampert. Important to note, the Reflect is still up, so I want to try to hit it on the special side. And this is why we conserve the Magmortars, because of course I know I can come in here, outspeed this thing. It's probably looking enticing for them to go for just like anything and kill me. They know I can't really touch it. But of course we do have that Solar Beam and I'm also Power Herb. So they do stay in, which is amazing for us. We can go ahead and absorb some sunlight and then be like, actually, that's going to be enough for me. I'm fully friggin' sunburnt as hell out here and the Solar Beam is going to activate in one turn and just absolutely blast his ass back to the friggin' region he came from. So that's going to finish off the Swampert, which is great because I don't really have a whole lot of ways to hit that other than with this Magmortar. So luckily I saved that fella and now luckily for us they're down to one Mon left and unluckily for us it's friggin' Roaring Moon. So this thing comes in looking frightening. It's also going to activate uh, the Protosynthesis via a nice little booster energy and it is going to get a free attack boost which is not the best sight to see. So, this thing definitely outspeeds Magmortar, and we are going to be left in here to die, because there's nothing, <laughs> there's literally nothing I can do. They did just go for the knockoff. I'm thinking, please, Flame Body activate. Of course it doesn't. I swear to God, I'm convinced that Flame Body doesn't exist. It's never happened for me. And one day it's gonna, and I'm going to be like, hell yeah. So, I have two Mons left. I decide to go into the Galarian Zapdos, because I'm thinking, hold on. While I am, of course, going to be weak to an Acrobatics, which surely this thing's going to have, I have a plan. I am obviously fighting type, so that's going to just obliterate me. However, I can actually go for the Terra Flying just to get rid of my weakness to that acrobatics, and then I finish it off with the close combat and then freaking stomp. So, that is the game plan. Time to execute. I'm going to go ahead and put some balloons on my head. We're looking extra flying type, even though these little wings are not going to be getting us anywhere. So luckily, the freaking helium from the balloon is going to be flying us around, and they do go for that acrobatics. I am able to take it thanks to the Terra. Now I just gotta go ahead and punch him with my big ass feet, but it actually lives. Somehow, the somehow Roaring Moon <laughs> lived the close combat, which is horrible news. So my ass definitely planned on that finishing the game. It turns out it is not over yet. So they go for the knockoff, which is gonna finish off uh, the Zapdos here. And now we got ourselves a good old fashioned 1v1 action going on. I do have one Mon in the back, and it's gonna be our pal Cleaver. So. Uh, this thing, obviously if I can touch it, I can win the game. The only thing is, can Cleaver take an attack, you know, from a attack boosted Roaring Moon? I'm just going to go for the X scissor here to play it safe and see what happens. So they actually end up going for the knockoff and I live with 7 HP. They 
surely thought that that was going to be able to finish me off. And honestly, I kind of did too. I think that was a damage roll that I got lucky on for Cleaver to be able to live that. But uh, sometimes that base 95 defense comes in clutch and the Rock Boy is going to finish off the Roaring Moon. And effectively, that's going to be the end of the game. So that was a wild match. A crazy ending came right down to the wire. And that's always a fun time. However, we're not done with the Decidui because I do have another game here for you guys. And if you've stuck around this far into the match and are thinking, hey, this is fun, go ahead and hit that like button because it really does help out the channel. And uh, I do appreciate the support. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so this time my dude with his cool glasses is going to lead off with the freaking, what, some screen tail? Yeah, I forget this thing's name. I, I don't know why they did this to this guy. I don't know. Jigglepuff with a mohawk is actually kind of annoying. Now, I have Eridos this time. I'm here to set up Sticky Web, and this is actually not a horrible matchup for me because, you know, I'm poison type and stuff. So they're actually going to go for the Reflect. Most of the time when I see a screen tail, I imagine they're just going to be dual screens with Light Clay, and it's looking like that's what this dude wants to work with. So... I decide I'm going to try to take advantage of this and go for some little, little toxic spikes, but it, they're going to go for a freaking Encore. And they just, they're like, hey, that uh, Sticky Web was so cool, go ahead and do it again. So, obviously, that is going to lock me into that, and it's not great. So, I decide I'm going to go ahead and try to switch into the Sandy Shocks. I, I want to try to get my Stealth Rock up. I want to try to pile on the hazards. Even if they do have removal, I have a little plan for it, which we're going to try to see if we can get it going later. So... They're going to set up the Stealth Rock of their own, kind of just a classic screen tail lead. These things are just bulky and like fast and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead, bust out the Stealth Rock of my own, and this thing's actually faster. Scream Tail, I don't know why the hell you're so fast, but they, they do be zooming. Base 111 speed just feels too damn fast for the thing. So we both get our Stealth Rock up, and at this point, they can obviously just Encore me if they want. It's not really going to, I mean, I'm just going to stay in and try to go for a Volt Switch. If they want to Encore... That's fine. They do, in fact, go for that Encore, and now I've just, I've been trying to set up my damn hazards multiple times out here, and uh, again, it's fine, because it kind of just, it's burning turns of the screens, but also, it's just worth it for me to try to click the Bolt Switch there. So, I'm now going to go ahead and switch into the Toxic Rogue. I figure, at least, I, if I can bring this thing in, it, it doesn't look like it has Psychic coverage, so that should be getting pretty solid. But they actually end up switching themselves. They're going to bring in the Meowskarada, which... It's actually pretty great for me. First of all, it gets caught up in the sticky web, so now the Toxic Croak is going to be faster. But also, the Croak finds itself in a pretty great matchup, just because, you know, this thing, I know Meowskarada can't touch me. I threaten it with a Poison Jab, and Toxic Croak can come in here and at least be a little bit scary. So, I figure it's probably worth it for me to try to Swords Dance here. I know that they do have a good switch in, in terms of the Corviknight, but... At this point, I'm kind of trying to draw that thing anyway, and so as they do go to the Corviknight, it is going to take a little bit of Stealth Rock Chip. As I set up the Sword Stance, I have the option to try to just go for a close combat with that boost, but as I'm looking at this on kind of their team comp, this is the only hazard removal they have, and it's going to go for a Defog here. Surely they don't want the Sticky Web to stay up, they have the Stealth Rock there. Knowing that they're going to go for the Defog, I can actually switch into the Galarian Zapdos, and that... This thing's kind of on the team for opposing defoggers. As they go for that, it is going to get rid of my hazards, which, you know, it sucks. But it drops my evasiveness, which then activates my defiant, and that gives me a free plus two attack on the Galarian Zap. So that's a decent trade off for me. And while it is solid, they do, the reflect goes away, first of all, which is even better for me. And as I can go for a nice little plus two close combat here, they're going to switch because the defensive core on this squad is incredibly annoying because, of course, they have friggin' <laughs> Don Bozo in the back. And Don Dozo takes the close combat nicely because this catfish bastard is unaware. And unaware is just kind of stopping me in my tracks in terms of uh, Galarian Zap being able to do too much to it. And I'm like, wow, the Defiant was fun. They, however, they get rid of the hazards and they end up on top because uh, unaware is so annoying, especially just Don Dozo in general. So I'm actually just going to stay in here and go for the knockoff. I know that I can take at least any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And I can be like, hey, screw you leftovers, bro. You are done eating those, and at least at least make it a little easier for me to get continual chip on this fella. So, they actually end up going for the Yawn, which is unfortunate. Forces me to kind of go for a U-turn here. I don't want Zapdos to be put to sleep. And with the U-turn, I can now bring in, you know, something better fit for the damn job. So, I decide to go into the Toxic Rook once again. I'm thinking, you know, I can maybe stop this thing from going for any water attacks because I'm dry skin. And I can at least deal with it. It's like half HP. So they actually end up going for another Yawn. They predict the switch. 
and go for the double yawn, which Toxicroak is not wanting to fall asleep. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, if you wanna continue to click yawn, I'm gonna continue to switch around. This time, I'm gonna try to go into the Sandy Shocks. And I know that they're not gonna go for any water attack here, so I'm kind of free to bring this in. And then I just threaten it with a Thunderbolt. So, as they actually end up going for the curse, that is perfect. These things just swearing like a sailor over there. But, um, of course, now I do definitely have this thing in range for a Thunderbolt to knock it out. And your boy is not trying to waste any time. So I'm going to T-Bolt. They do actually end up switching out the Dozo. They realize that, yeah, this thing is going to get zapped to a damn crisp. And they can bring in this little fella. So the Pomot does, of course, have the Volt Absorb. And there is just some, some shenanigans going down. So with this thing coming in for free, I'm not super worried about it in terms of offensively. I know that I can take any attack it wants to throw, which is why I'm kind of it was relatively free to go for that T-Bolt. And as they go for the fake out, it's not really going to do much either. Plus, you know, I obviously just have the coverage with an Earth Power. And I'm like, I'm just going to just gonna be here and go for the Earth Power. Something is going to die to this damn Sandy Shock. So, they do go for the close combat, which does do a nice chunk to me. However, they get the drop. And then I'm like, yep, that is fine. Excuse me, I'm just going to go ahead and Earth Power, take my kill. But it leaves with a freaking Focus Sash, which is also extra annoying as to them getting rid of that Stealth Rock. So... It does live on that sash, and now I have the decision to make on... I probably want to conserve the Sandy Shocks here. It's just good offensively, and I'm like, you know what? I know they're probably just going to close combat, and that's going to open the door for freaking Robin Hoot to come in here. And this is actually kind of a good position that I've been trying to get myself in, because in this matchup, I should be able to get up a Swords Dance, and honestly, Decidueye with the SD up should be looking pretty good against their squad. So they do close combat, goes right through us, because we're ghost as hell out here, boy. And now it is time to bust out the Swords Dance. So they still have the full squad left. They are going to end up switching out uh, the freaking fake-ass Pikachu fella to potentially save for later. And they're going to end up bringing in Meowskarada. So as I go ahead and dance with some swords, we have a very interesting matchup here. So first of all, I know that Meowskarada wants to go for a knockoff here. And also, thanks to its ability, it's going to turn into full dark type. And while... Leaf Blade is not very effective now. I know that they're going to go for that knockoff, so I'm actually going to bust out the Terra Fairy to be able to guarantee I can live that. Of course, my game does break on that animation. doesn't show me going for the Terra, but I can assure you I am fully now Fairy type. They are going to go for the knockoff just according to plan and transform into the Dark type, which is great because I do, of course, live the knockoff easily. And now I can slice and dice him up with a Leaf Blade, and that is going to be able to take care of Meowskarada, which is amazing. And Decidueye is now positioned really, honestly, pretty well uh, against their squad. They do have the Corviknight left, but first they're going to decide to bring in the Pomot. They're like, this is fine. I can just outspeed with the little, little Pika fella, and they just destroy me with, a, like, a, what, a Double Shock or whatever. But I'm just going to Shadow Snake. No one sees the priority coming. I pick off that last HP, and that is going to take care of the uh, Pomot. So... At this point, we're going on a little little mini late game Decidueye tear, and as they bring in the Corviknight here, with my Sword Stance here, I have an easy two hit KO with Spirit Shackle, and as long as they don't have steel coverage, which a lot of the time they're not working with, it's probably Body Press, they decide to just go ahead and run, and the, uh, the late game Decidueye coming in clutch on that one. So, we force the Rage Quit with the Robin Hoot, which is not a, an easy task, and that's going to be the end of the match. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really appreciate the support. Also, I want to say, if you, basically as this video came out, I have this scheduled to be while I'm actually in Japan for my honeymoon trip. And uploads are probably going to be a little bit more scarce. I'm trying to get some schedule out for the trip while I'm gone. But uh, thanks for the continued support. I do appreciate you guys. And I'll catch you next time. Peace out.